Hello guys, uh, the Melon Man here today and I have a real special guest with me today. I've got Dr. Aris Lantham with me. He is a fellow Jamaican, uh, new friend of mine. He's, he's becoming a really good friend of mine and I'm really, really pleased to get an opportunity to speak with him. Uh, I was born in Jamaica in Kingston myself, but I grew up in Canada since I was four years old. And uh, this is what, you know, what a magical opportunity to be coming full circle, to be making uh, relationships again with a friend in Jamaica that has, uh, you know, so much more experience and so much more knowledge. And you know what, I'm coming home to, to learn from a real Jedi Knight, from a real master of raw food, of raw food eating and healing. Uh, Dr. Lantham, uh, has a honorary PhD from from the City University in Los Angeles. He's been a raw food eater and healer for over 42 years. We're talking about a lifetime of experience. Um, I, I'm super excited to connect with him and open up some doors for possibility of what we can do together in my homeland in Jamaica. And we've got already some plans that are in the works for the new year. So we'll talk a little bit about that today. We'll introduce those ideas. But first of all, I just wanna talk about uh, sun-dried foods and the sunlight and the earth and raw food healing with Dr. Lantham. Dr. Lantham, welcome. Okay. Hey, hey, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow. You know, it's uh you know it's been it's been 71 years now, you know, that uh I was named Aris Latam. <laughs> and Latam years. Yeah, well actually, you know, that's what history says, but in reality I'm one year old. You know, I'm, I'm now uh, on the second half of my life. <laughs> so after 70 years, the clock starts over at year one to com be, com go on to the second half of my life, my next 70 years here. Uh, having been born in Panama, being a Jamaican born abroad, <laughs> I was born in Panama in what was known as the U.S. Canal Zone. So my grandparents left Jamaica, oh, about 1900 or so, on a mission to build the world a canal, the Panama Canal, built by my grandparents. Wow. So my parents were born there, I was born there, and uh, I've, been on, I've been continuing their journey. So I migrated to the U.S. at the age of 17, and I uh, lived there for 36 years. Wow closed the U.S. chapter <laughs> in 2000 <laughs> and uh, moved on to Jamaica, went back to my grandfather's home, and, uh, and I landed in Jamaica with a big blast in 2000 because we landed with what was known as the Raw Food Culinary Masters Showcase at Swept Away Resort in the Grill, and we had over 300 raw food practitioners, Brian Clement, uh, you name it. Yes, uh, you know, so we all came down. David Avocado Wolf and uh, the A-list of the raw food circuit at the time, Annette Larkins, you know. So anyway, it's been 18 years, you know, since I made that move into Jamaica. Well, after going there back in 1995, I agree actually in the grill at the treehouse. And, you know, so that's when, you know, my reintegration started back into Jamaica, back to my father's land. And, you know, I've been in Jamaica off and on for the past 15 years, but continuing to live around the world, you know, continuing with the tradition that my family, you know, uh, brought me through on, which is basically goes back, to, I guess, to our ancient history of being... Africans that have been, you know, what we call uh, migrating to the green, next green pasture. <laughs> so, uh, so now, you know, I'm full circle because Jamaica seems to be the, one of the brightest green pasture on the horizon. You know, the Prime Minister of Jamaica had put out a call about a year ago 
for Jamaican descendants living in the diaspora to come home to assist in the development of Jamaica. So I met with the prime minister a couple of weeks ago at the Denby Fairground, the big agricultural fair uh, of Jamaica, the annual fair. So we met at the, the Denby Fairground where I was doing a demonstration for the JOAM, the Jamaica Organic Agriculture Movement. You know, and uh, so I told him, I'm here to answer your call to come back home to assist in the development of Jamaica. So I got the big embrace and the big green light to come on, man, let's do it. So here we are taking it to the next level and I'm happy to connect with you, you know, a real born Jamaican, <laughs> you know, so we can, can go ahead and, and, you know, keep Jamaica ascending, you know, keep Excellent. that little small spot on the world Excellent. that has produced Usain Bolt, Marcus Garvey, you know, Bob Marley, you know, Queen Nanny. You know, so here we are, children of Jamaicans, wow. you know, bringing that Jamaican Thank you. flag Wonderful. all the way back wow. up. Love to and connect. especially in the natural healing circle, Jamaica yes. got a lot to contribute to the world. <laughs> a lot to offer. A lot yes. to offer. <laughs> all the sunlight, all the fruits, all the raw, natural, organic foods available. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right. So I, I, I'm excited, man. Oh, I'm that's excited. awesome. This is going to be awesome. This is going to be awesome. We're going to have something wonderful to offer for everybody. Sir, before we start talking about, you know, possibilities and what we can do together, let's just talk a little bit about the details of um, your whole platform, the sun-dried foods and, and your philosophy Okay, well, it's all rooted in a word that I coined uh, back in 1979 when I started uh, on this journey uh, as a, uh, I guess, as a, as a messenger, you know, to share with the world community. It started in Harlem, New York. Yes, in 1979, wow. you know, at the, at the corner of Lenox Avenue and 125th Street, right across from what we called at the time UCLA. Wow. UCLA was the university at the corner of Lenox Avenue. And it was a place called the Tree of Life, uh, set up by Kanye McGee. And the Tree of Life was a repository of just healing knowledge. You know, Hilton Hotema's books, you know, books from all of the ancient masters of living food, of yoga, tai chi, meditation in the heart of Harlem. So across the street from the Tree of Life, I opened up Savannah Herbs. And Savannah Herbs became the home of my cuisine, which I call sun-fired food. So in coining the word sun-fired food, you know, since I got into the culture of eating fresh plant foods uh, in its living state, you know, I was just not happy in 1979 with the word raw food, because there's nothing raw about this cuisine at all. I think it's actually an insult to call the, the, the nature's perfect creation of living food, plant food, raw, because it leaves the door open for Jamaicans and everybody else to look at a perfectly cooked, ripe plantain cooked by the sun and say, God, you made a mistake. I'm going to fry this plantain, beat it, boil it, bake it, steam it, and do all the other things to it. And what we are doing in that process is we're cooking the sun out of the food. Whether it's a plantain, a tomato, a lettuce, ackee, you know, uh, string beans, papayas, mangoes, carrot, peaches, pecans, almonds, walnuts, uh, pumpkin. Hey, the whole point of the journey is to transfer effectively, scientifically, the energy of the sun that has been compacted in the fruits of the earth into our body without destroying that solar energy. Ultimately, what we eat is the sun, but we can't just reach up and grab a bite of the sun. So the sun is packaged in an apple, in a peach, in a pear, in mango, lettuce, tomatoes, oranges. And you see all the vibrations, all the colors, all the condensations of all the solar ray atop of this green backdrop 
the bush, <laughs> the tropical, the, 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 the forest, you know, the, the temperate bush. So here we are today living the sun-fired life and acknowledging, accepting that there's only one chef on this planet, the sun, and it cooks for us all. Visited every community, every hamlet, every village, every ghetto, every suburb, every day to make sure humanity get their pot cooked. Make sure that the, the, the cherries that blossom in Washington, D.C. in the spring, those cherry blossoms, that those cherries get cooked to perfection. So when we have full, ripe, juicy, black, sweet cherries, the pot is ready and we see the birds come home to eat. They certified that the pot is done. So we enjoy our sweet cherries, we enjoy our mangoes, coconuts, papayas, apples, strawberries, you name it, lettuce, tomatoes, cooked by the sun, certified by the, 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 the testing you know, animals of life to make sure that, yeah, it's good for you people, it's good for you humanities. And if you're not careful, the birds are gonna eat the whole crop before you get to yours. So we gotta <laughs> you know, rise up and get our share. And uh, hey, you know, look, we're in a situation here where there's so much value, so much knowledge that is exposed to humanity. And my 70 years, my first, first half of my journey on this planet, I spent it researching and experimenting with myself and been blessed to be able to share with thousands of people around the world and have trained thousands of chefs also around the world. So we are all interconnected now. And thanks to this spy machine here that we can all connect on the internet in the virtual time zone to get the world into the motion of accepting the fact that we are on the verge of building a new civilization. And yes, it better be having health as a key foundation and of course you know technology the wisdom of modern humans creation of bringing it all together in technology so food health technology here we come the all new right. life world right. civilization is dawning <laughs> okay sir so you touched on a few things i want to i want to go back over with you first of all i want to come right back to the beginning and you said um you were talking about the tree of life uh, uh, in New York. I can't remember, 112th Street or 120th Street. 125th Street and, and, and Lenox Avenue. 125th Street, yes. And you, yes. Talked about, uh, you talked about Hilton Hotema. Yes. Yes. So are you familiar with his book then, uh, Man's uh, Search for Higher oh, I, Consciousness? I'm or? familiar with the over 100 books written by Hilton Hotema. Oh, oh nice. Great, oh, nice. Very nice, uh, sir. Brilliant and ancient masters that have got me sitting where I'm sitting today. I consume quite a few of his books, you know, and uh, he has left us some gems that we see today being filtered and rehashed in many of the new raw food, you know, credentials that's a, that are out here today. Yes. A lot of these were this, planted uh, by this Hilton man, Hotema. This man is, is uh, stirring me deeply and motivating me deeply and inspiring me deeply with his message and his words. And that, and that is driving me forward right now uh, into pursuing um, the, you know, the, the raw food and fasting and, you know, uh, I, I know you don't like me to call it raw food. Uh, I, I think you'd prefer me to say sun-fired food and fasting. But, uh, you know, his message that uh, really, ultimately, it's, it's the emptiness that is the true healing. Are, are you in agreement with that? Well, the, the body itself is totally self-healing. There's nothing external that we can put into our body or you know, apply even externally to our body that's going to heal us. The body is super intelligent. It is completely self-healing. It produces all of its antibiotics, but unfortunately, we spill it every day. You know, thinking that it's you know, it, it is not fit for human consumption. They, so we're we, going to we think it's garbage. We throw the antiseptic and the antibiotic <laughs> and the and the the hundred percent healing medicine away. 
Yes, we flush it down. (laughs) (laughs) This is my most recent thing, sir. I'm glad you brought this up. I'm glad. I didn't know what position you had on this, but I've just come to the light on this, and I've just come to really, you know, I've just come to the, to the self-confidence and the self-realization that I have to be um, honest with myself and honest with my, my audience as well, too, that I, ha- that I have to talk about this and shine light on this because everybody is, you know, all the ones that are really healing and really creating change in people's lives have, have made the jump here. Uh, obviously, you've made this giant jump, this giant leap. What, what is the medicine, sir, that heals all things? Well, the medicine is within. And, you know, we were born in a pool of it. You know, the, as, as embryos, we, we spend nine months in our amniotic fluid. And our amniotic fluid is our own body fluid that is in that placenta, that is in that bag, our yes. own urine as, as, as embryos. Yes. This is what we, 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 we're swimming in. You know, life is, life is created in water. But to have it created and permeated through the own water that has come through thine own cistern, <laughs> through your own system, mm-hmm. this is the perfect water. So they may call it urine, but we call it, you know, uh, tonic. <laughs> we call it tonic. I've heard of people calling it orin. I've heard of people calling it sh- shimbavu, sh- sh- shibavu or shimbavu. Uh, well, you know, there, there are many languages in the world. You know, so, yeah. so unfortunately, yeah. the, the English language, you know, with the word urine is not that, you know, interesting. It sounds too <laughs> medical. It sounds yeah. too medical. It sounds too... Um... It, it sounds just like the, the implication of what we actually do with it. It sounds like <laughs> something to be discarded. <laughs> yes. yes. And, and, uh, and I think there, there's a real big one. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, with all respect, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with Dr. Morse. Yes, I am very familiar with the words of Dr. Morris. Yes. And, 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 and all respect to Dr. Morris. I, I very much respect Dr. Morris and I really appreciate everything that Dr. Morris has said and done for me and my life. And I, and I don't mean to uh, shine any negative light on Dr. Morris at all and what he does or what he says or, or, or what he has said. And, and, uh, I, but he is um, outwardly uh, against urine therapy. And that is because um, he talks about the lymphatic waste leaving through the kidney and, and out through the urine. And if we're ingesting the urine, we are again ingesting um, that acidic lymphatic waste. Can you yeah, comment that, on that? Yes, there, there, is a, there is a complete science behind this. Mm-hmm. It is not about just bucketing your urine and drinking it. It is completely scientific. And this has been in practice uh, through the Hindu culture for s- centuries. 5,000 you know, years, I think, sir. Ayurvedic medicine. And, yeah. and I practice it myself personally. Yes. And I was able to, to evolve my body to uh, heal itself of a couple of warts through urine therapy. Yes. So th- the science goes that, yes, in the urine, there are toxins, there are acids, yes. there are extreme uh, things that everything comes out in the urine, the yes. good, the bad, and, and the indifferent. Yes. And so uh, ideally, we need to div- divide each flow of mu- urine into three different parts. Mm. Three different parts. So the, the initial flow, the initial third of every drop of urine that comes out of our system, the initial third is where all the acid is. So if you're living in a male body and you actually are able to see your urine flowing out, you know, at the time, because, you know, uh, it's projected in front of you, you could see that the initial thrust, the initial flow is very dark, very rich, and it begins and it lightens up as you get to the end of the flow, it becomes very light as opposed to the initial flow. So in that initial flow, that initial third is where the acid, toxic waste is, is. So the middle third of the flow is where the antibiotics are. Mm. And the, third, the latter third part of the flow generally is no value. 
So mm. what we want to do, we want to bucket the, the middle of each flow. Wow. That middle okay. flow where the okay. antibiotics are. Okay. You know, because, you know, look, the human body is super intelligent. And, and again, we have, been, we have had human beings that have been doing this for thousands of years and they have observed all of this thing the same way we have observed the movement of the sun and we can predict when it's going to rain and all of these other things. We have mastered the human body in many other levels as well. But unfortunately, in this world, uh, based on Western medical science and, and technology and psychology, you know, uh, in order to protect, you know, the value of Western civilization, some of these things are shunned upon because, you know, if the world get healed without med modern medical scientific that, are, that have been developed in the West, then there's going to be a mass uh, shattering of all the economic values of the West because all the hospitals need, would need to be shut down. All of the institution that train doctors need to be shut down. All of the doctors need to be reached channeled to other works. All of the pharmaceutical, we're talking a huge leak, you know, of the economic system that there'll be a mass collapse. Drugs, food and drugs, uh, whole, the whole setup of the system it would have to be redone. So for that reason, th this information doesn't come out. So you know what, one thing, one thing that I want to, to talk about there that, that we're talking about this is that, um, you know, I think it's important for this to, to, to be heard and, and understood is that it is, the, it is the Western medicine model where you have to, you know, we, we are, we're told to consume, you know, coffee is okay, alcohol is okay. Rice is okay. Potatoes are okay. Chips and popcorn and Coca-Cola and, and ice cream and meat and everything is okay. And then we're all getting sick. Well, and that's, the, that's the objective. That's the objective. Of course. That's the that's objective. It's to understand that that is... It's a sick economy. It's an economy. <laughs> Yes. The economy, it works like this. So then we get so, sick and then we go for the medicine and then we take the medicine, which is actually making us even more sick, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and, and fortunately, many of us today can sit where we are and not bash the medical industry because we love them. They have so much to offer humanity. And, and we know that many doctors uh, uh, got caught in a situation of buying a malpractice education because most of modern disease is stem from food, from diet, and they get barely six hours of nutrition over the whole 30 years of being involved in the school system. So they're not equipped. They have not bought the right sort of knowledge to deal with modern uh, uh, disease. So we have to help them. We're not here to bash them. We're here to work right. with them we had right. a partner we're with not, them we're not trying to attack anybody we're not trying to put anybody down but but however what i think is really important to understand is it is how that model works is that we we get sick from cons, over consumption and then we go to them and then we purchase a healing a healing medicine which actually isn't healing it actually continues the whole cycle well, this is because the, the whole medical system also has been hijacked by the same system that hijacked our food basket. And it's the bankers. It's not the doctors. It's the bankers. It's the profit and greed. It's the 1%. The investments yeah. in the drugs, they need these, these to, to re return the dollars and dividends. And it's all yes. a money mass it's type of money line. making. It's the bottom line. So it's not about how it makes you feel, look, think, or whatever. It's not it's about, about healing. It's about making it's about, money. It's a money it's making. The bottom business. line. Right. It's so so, line. so what, what, so what I can, think is really important for people to understand, and, and uh, that is that, you know, when you have a model like this, and whenever you see a model like this where someone says, you've got to buy a certain thing to be healed, You've got to buy this medicine or you've got to buy this supplements. A lot of the naturopaths are trying to sell these supplements 
or trying well, to sell well, you, these well, you see, this, this is their dilemma. They have paid too much money for the education and they cannot make it one-on-one -on -one, face to face with you and I because they need to have, they need to moonlight. They need to sell a product. So that's why we are not sitting here today to focus on them, to highlight with them. But we just wanted to put this little snip in there, but we want to really show you all that we are proactive, progressive, and, you know, we can go on and on and on and on. And it's about, you know, where we are today. I'm sitting right here in paradise, Costa Rica. I am overlooking a beautiful landscape in a valley that is called Diamond Valley, one of the luscious places on earth. And we are sitting in a place that has tremendous amount of permaculture activity going on, organic fruits and vegetables all over. Here, we, we, we have put together a whole salad platter here. You know, look at this. I mean, this is all organic. Oh my, all you know, my. I have my, my, my coconuts. I have my fresh picked pineapples that were just picked uh, yesterday. You know, and this is why we are bringing this to you to show you that, you know, you don't have to be sick. It was not part of the plan. All you got to do is eat, keep it fresh, keep it live, keep it sun fired. And it's not about the food in your life but it's all about the life in your food that matters. So let's keep it that way. Let's keep it fresh. And, you know, if we could put a Jamaican accent on it, some Scotch bonnet pepper, <laughs> wow, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. So, so I, I want to sum, sum up what we were talking about there. And I, and I want to just finish off that little part of our talk here by saying that, um, you know, it the, the the current system is focused on those dollars and the true healing does not require any dollars at all that's right <laughs> the true healing it doesn't require you to purchase any medicine at all all of the medicine is created within yourself all of the power and energy is within you and around you the light of the sun the power of the earth the waters the waters inside of your kidneys and the foods that are raw and natural are all you need to heal and you don't need to buy anything or get anything or get a diagnosis of anything there is no real disease that you have to be worried or afraid of you don't need to take anything, vitamin or mineral, or search out, to circuit, search out to get it. If you are eating live raw food and fasting, and if you need the stronger medicine, the healing waters from within are there, and the power and loving energy of our creation and intention is within us, and we just need to put that out into our life in the right way to make sure that we are moving forward and we can move forward without spending any dollars in any, in any healing vitamin, mineral pill or substance. We don't. Yeah, so need. It, this is the direction of humanity and the ball is rolling. So it's all rooted in the fact that you do not have to be sick. So don't be surprised, you know, that generations from now, the whole concept of healing is going to be mute because we won't we should never ever be sick it's not part of the plan okay <laughs> so you know let thy food be thy medicine and thy medicine be thy food this has been resonating for thousands of years from the voices of you know our ancient ancestors who have figured it out long time ago so the whole system i said has been hijacked by the bankers but now we are step forward to take ownership of our life, of our bodies, and the word is out. We really don't have to be sick. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. So um, let's uh, move on from, you know, Hilton Hotima and, um, you know, sun-fired foods. You're, you're, you are a sun-fired foods cook. So anything that is, um, you know, photosynthesis 
anything that is created by the light and energy of the sun, that is where we get our energy, our healthy healing energy from. Can you, can you uh, uh, talk to me anything a little bit about looking into the sun? Do you, do you practice looking into the sun? Do you, do you recommend looking into the sun? Do you recommend being in the sun or being on the earth, touching the earth? Is this an aspect of anything that you like to talk about or would you like to add anything about this? Is this important for us to be in the sunlight? I know a lot of people have a fear of the sun. Okay, well, you know, first of all, again, my cuisine that I have uh, observed, as we call it sun-fired, which means, again, it's cooked by the sun, but we further go on and call it sun-fired ra food, R-A. R-A, ra, is the word for sun in ancient Kemetic or Egyptian uh, culture. So that's why, you know, when we say ra food, some people think we're saying raw food. So that's why we do still accept the word raw food. It's just a matter of linguistics, okay? So yes, there are no Ws at the end, you know, in, of, of, of African languages. You know, it follows what they call a CV pattern, consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel. So, and that is why, you know, as a linguist, as a trained linguist, did my master's work in linguistics, and studying linguistics has really got me to where I am. Traveling the world, studying linguistics, and understanding, especially growing up in the U.S., being educated in the U.S., and being a part of the whole bilingual education movement for years in the U.S., we recognize that, you know, even African descendants in the U.S., we speak African languages. You know, so when someone say raw food, it, you know, yes, it could mean raw food because in these languages, there's no W at the end. There's no consonant at the end. So I just wanted to clarify that to say that I am not against the word raw food <laughs> because it's actually raw food and it's just a matter of linguistics that may create a little blockage. But yes, the point is that the food is cooked by the sun and the primary nutrient for human consumption is the sun. It's about eating the sun. And as I say, we can't grab a bite of the sun, but we can grab it uh, in its condensed forms that it comes through our food, through our nutrients, you know, but also just exposing our body to the sun. We're gonna eat a lot through the skin. It's the same way we can absorb the minerals in the sea by only dipping our body into the sea and it get absorbed through the skin. But if we try to drink the water from the sea, it's gonna dehydrate us. <laughs> so similar with the sun, we can't just eat the sun because it's gonna burn us to death. So we consume it through our skin. We consume it through our ears, through our, through, through our, the hair, you know, through many different channels. We consume it through our eyes, through observing the sun. So if you wanna do sun gazing, you start off with the first sun in the morning that early sun, as the sun hits your horizon and it begins to rise, you want to be staring deep into that sun. And if you can only do that for one second today, it's all about sun yoga. Tomorrow, you can do it for two seconds. The day after, three seconds. And you'll see after 30 years of doing it, you might be up to about five minutes. 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So, and because the sun burns the clouds out of the sky, like we see every morning if it's cloudy. Similarly, it burns the mucus out of your body. So if there's mucus in, in the vessels that are leading to your eyeball, it's gonna be burnt out. So all the glaucoma and all of these blurry eye diseases that is based on eating starchy foods that have created this film of cloud over our eyeball, the sun is going to burn that out. Similarly, the way it burns the rest of it. We are just heavenly bodies here. Human beings, human bodies are heavenly body. We are out here in the universe, and we are affected by the movement, the energy of the sun, and all of the other planets here in, in our, our, our you know, universe. So, yes, eating the sun through the eyes, through the skin, and this thing about exposing ourselves to the sun and the whole cancer, skin cancer issue, 
come on, let's come on back home to life, to real life. We know that humanities come in various shades and hues of colors, of intensity and of gradient lightness. And you know, yeah, the more melanated the skin tone is, the more you can absorb the sun. You know, you, the more, you, you know, but the more toxins in your body and being expo exposing that body to the sun, the sun is gonna rip those toxins out of the cell and, and they're gonna be, you know, looking to be surfaced through your skin, which is the largest organ of elimination. And if you're not hydrating yourself properly and doing other things to complement the work of the sun, then those toxins are gonna linger right under the surface of your skin and modern medicine would put a, a skin cancer tag on that and sell you something to fight your nature. The same way as your body eliminates toxins, eliminate waste, based on the movement of the sun, based on the summer solstice, the winter solstice, the equinox and so forth and so on. And the body is releasing mass toxins. You know, modern medical science would say it's a flu and give you something to stop that elimination of vaccine, a pill or whatever it is, they can sell you to interfere and intrude and give you temporary relief, you know, from what your nature, your body, your system, the universe is doing naturally to get you aligned with the rest of the heavenly bodies in the universe and they sold you a short circuit so that you can get back down into the pit and get back into being a consumer of their profit and greed business. Mm -hmm. So we are awake now. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the wool has been pulled off from over our eyes. Mm -hmm. We're no longer blindfolded. Mm -hmm. And we know their works. And that is why I do not practice medicine. I do not practice healing. I am not against them. I am not in line to be the next Dr. Sabi or whoever you think needs to be shut up. Because mm -hmm. I am not talking about what you're talking about. We're talking about food. We're talking about people eating. We're talking about taking back the power. And we are actually continuing the revolution that started in the 60s. As students on college campus, we decided to become vegetarians because we realized that your food that you put in our cafeteria were weapons. And we rejected it as radical students growing up in the 60s, not anti-system, not anything. We was just dealing with self-defense and refused to point the, the, the apple gun into our, our, our intestine and blow ourselves up from eating off of your plate. And this is why we thank Michelle Obama for taking that pyramid off and bringing up the My Plate concept of nutrition guideline for the American consumers. She did a great move. So there's a lot that is being done through the political circles, through the business circles, by wonderful people to counteract, you know, the monstrosity that has been going on and, and attacking humanity just based on profit and greed. So my plate today consists of, you know, all fresh foods. And this is what we're all about or living foods, I do not kill my food. I don't kill my plate. So, and the word is out. And we are definitely in ownership of it now. And we have actually, from the groundswell that happened in the 60s, the grassroots pushed people like Michelle Obama to listen to us and bring out that my plate, putting forward a concept that we've been talking about for years, you know, uh, since she was an infant. You know, so it's great to be an elder in this community and it's great to be standing firm and strong and continue in the revolution, the food revolution that brought us into this age of Aquarius. And it's a new day. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay, sir. So uh, one other thing I want to want to ask you about is, uh, is, you know, fasting. You know, I'm, I'm telling people that we, we need to stay empty as long as we can daily. I, I tell my customers that they should start at 14 hours a day of emptiness. Can you, can you comment anything on the importance of fasting? Um, you know, do, does, it, does it play an important role? Well, absolutely. It plays a tremendous important role. You know, we, 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 we were conceived in a fasting mode. You know, being in, in, in that amniotic fluid, 
for nine months in, in, as an embryo, we were fasting all those nine months. And we, we get out of there fasting, you know, and, and, and having ideally being breastfed by our mother for two years of strictly breast milk, we've been, we fasted. We are professional fasters from birth if we follow the natural order of, of human growth and development. So after we, we are weaned from our mother's milk, from our mother's breast, we actually began to break our fast and start ingesting solid food after the year or two because it takes us, it takes us a good two years to develop our digestive system. An infant needs two years of developing its digestive system. And that digestive system is not going to be developed properly if he's trying to force feed, being force fed with solid food. So this is why a lot of us are, are faulty digestive systems today because we were not breastfed. And to take it to the next level, once we, we, we go to sleep every night, every night for eight hours, we shut our system down. And this is the classical definition of a, of a fast, is to hold fast. Nothing gets past your lips. So when we are sleeping every night, we have been fasting. We are professional fasters all our life because that one third of our day, that eight hours that we sleep every night, we are in the fasting mode. And this is why, you know, thank the English people for their language to try to make it plain and clear and say that when you get up in the morning, you are in the break fast mode. <laughs> you know, breaking your fast. So because you call it a breakfast, it doesn't change it, what it means. It is a breaking of the fast. And we know that scientifically to break a fast on bacon and eggs or faking bacon and organic granola is totally unscientific. You do not break a fast like that. When you're fasting your stomach, this is the size of your stomach, the size of your fist. My stomach ain't no bigger than this. So when I go to fast at night, when I go to sleep and the stomach empties out, it comes back to this side, this rudimentary size right here. And when I wake up in the morning and I'm going into that bag, that stomach, and I'm opening it up wide open, following the instructions of my doctors who say that my breakfast is the most important meal of the day, have a big one. Wait, Doc, where did you learn that from? <laughs> I agree with you. The breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Because if you open that bag so wide, so big in the morning with pancakes and grits and, and granola and bagels and bialy and, and, and hominy corn and jerk chicken and, you know, hash brown and all of these stuff, that bag opened up so wide, so early in the morning, you got to keep it full for the rest of your day. And that's why, you know, the, the Latin people here in, in Costa Rica, years ago, they said, oops, after breakfast and lunch, you need to go on a siesta. They locked down all the stores and let everybody go to sleep because some kind of itis sets in. When you eat like that and you got to go to sleep because you're taxing your body. So to break a fast in the morning, you need to open that bag slowly, gently. Now, keep in mind that the stomach, the entire digestive system from the tip of the tongue to the anus is not a part of your body at all. It is a passageway through your body. It is a tunnel. It's a ch channel that passes through your body where you dump food material in there and it gets processed. And what you need, generally the gaseous and liquid part of those materials get pass through your intestinal walls, the lining of your system, and it goes into your body and the waste. You drop it as dung. You defecate the waste. Okay? So that tunnel, that channel, every morning you need to clean it out. You need to hose it out. You need to wash it. You need to scrub it, brush it. And some mashed potatoes in the morning is not going to do that. Okay? Putting foods in your body that does not facilitate the elimination mode, because when you're fasting at night, when you're sleeping and going through that fasting mode, the body is in repair. You actually put your body in the body shop at night for eight hours to get it repaired. So the cells that you cannot use get broken down and new ones are built up. So when you wake up in the morning after that eight hours of sleep, you're going into the second phase of your day. 
So you divide your day in a three-phase cycle where eight hours you're sleeping, you understand that. Nobody can argue with you about that. And in that sleeping mode, you are actually fasting and you're doing your reparation work. And when you wake up the next morning for eight hours, you are in the break fast mode. You are breaking your fast. It is not a meal. <laughs> it is an eight hour phase of your daily cycle that you are breaking the fast. So to break the fast unscientifically with that solid, heavy, rich starch and grease, you're asking for trouble because the waste that was released during your fasting mode, you're pushing it back down into the cells. And if that's not deep enough, you drop some cement on it, some glue, cereals. And you see the bankers, they created a whole meal out of cereal, out of starch, that breakfast meal that they ripped off and hijacked the food basket. They're selling you nothing but starch, glue, paste, cheap food, where they can make a big profit and center a whole meal around that. And that's the last thing you need in the morning is to put a bowl of cornmeal porridge into your little baby's stomach and try to send that kid off to school because all that blood in that child's system is now down in the digestive system trying to process that cornmeal, which is a complex carbohydrate. And you know those are complicated when you heard the word complex. And your baby child going to school now first thing in the morning with a gut full of cornmeal porridge, it has to turn that into sugar, it has to turn it into a simple carbohydrate. So yeah, he's gonna get in that classroom and bounce off the wall and try to do the, 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 the gymnastics rather than trying to sit down and learn and be quiet and absorb this knowledge because he doesn't have enough blood on his brain, not enough oxygen on his brain to focus because the blood is down in the digestive system trying to make sugar out of cornmeal porridge. So you labeled my little child as hyperactive. And hey, look, we can go on. We got about another thousand hours. We just started <laughs> and we ain't even got an hour yet. And you have gotten a lifetime of, of what you've been missing. <laughs> so, you know, I, I always <laughs> tell people that uh, they, they've got to get over this illusion with the, with the <laughs> breakfast idea. Um, you know, it, if you're going to be, if you're going to be ingesting anything in the morning at all, make it be fruit. And try, and try to make it be as late in the morning as they can. There is a wonderful thing. Just some coconut water if you need to have something in the morning. Otherwise, stay empty. Or if you have to have something, make it a raw fruit or, or something that's you know, going to eliminate very well, very easily. Don't make your body have to work a whole bunch and send a, bu a bunch of blood flow to your guts, which are going to slow you down and put you in the wrong place in the morning. Your body needs processing and healing to happen in the morning. So let's be empty through the morning and, and eat in the midday or later into the day if we can. That's where we start. Well, the, the, food. As I said, the morning phase is the elimination phase for yes. eight hours. So the, the system needs to focus on elimination. Yes. And the first thing you want to do in the morning is take an internal shower. And nothing facilitates an internal shower better than a young green coconut. Perfect. That's right, Granny. Granny used to say, "Boy, boy, go out and drink that coconut water and wash your heart out." Perfect. <laughs> yes. Perfect. You got to wash sir. your heart out. Perfect. You got to flush That's, that blood out. That would be my it, position. So, listen. <laughs> what we need to do right now is we just need to do it. We've got a, just a couple of minutes left before okay. you know, we spent an hour. I can't believe it already, but um, we need to foreshadow something here because I, I feel, and I wonder if you feel the same thing that. We're very much in alignment here, and, and I would love to do something in Jamaica. So I think you've got something coming up here in the end of the year. What are you doing in Jamaica down there that, uh, <laughs> that I could well, connect with you on? Because I would love to get involved with uh, your, your sun-fired sun foods, and, uh, and I would love to bring some people down from Canada or from the U.S. that may have some interest in, in fruit and fasting and detoxifying their bodies and uh, learning about the healing waters within and, and looking into the sun and touching the earth and doing some yoga and doing some exercise and some guided meditation and helping people lose weight and, and heal oh, yeah. their lives. Uh, I, I wonder what, where we could bring them and what could we do? What are you doing down there that we, could, that we could come to and be a part of, sir? Well, you know, we're continuing the journey. And what is going on, I, I've been uh, commissioned by a top resort in Jamaica to set up a complete 
raw food or a raw food restaurant for this spa. So we'll, we'll be having the grand opening of this restaurant in December. And uh, aside from that, I'm building other energies in Jamaica myself uh, through the Sun Fired Culinary Institute, where we're setting up our teaching kitchen uh, there. So we're talking about the Montego Bay area, you know, just a few minutes from the Montego International Airport. Uh, and Fantastic. To be, to be specific, the resort we're talking about is Half Moon Resort. Uh, Excellent. There. But we have other interests, other energies going to be coming on stream in the area. So we are looking to do, uh, of course, teacher trainings. We're looking to do wellness retreats, all Wonderful. centered around Wonderful. the Montego Bay area starting uh, uh, in, in the fall, in, in the, the winter season. And really just taking it to the ultimate level with academies and, you know, you name it. <laughs> you know, it's unlimited. All so, right, Jamaica. Here we are. <laughs> so, so there'll there'll be a, there'll be a hotel, there'll be a spa, there'll be a raw food or or, or sun fired foods. Uh, there'll be, uh, you know, I'll be teaching yoga or exercise. We'll be doing meditation. We'll we'll share information and knowledge, and and we'll help people to lose weight, heal, tone. Uh, change their lives in any way that they want. They'll have uh, uh, some, some, some support and, and uh, learn how to do this and have some encouragement along the way. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all about empowering people to take ownership of, of their life, you know, and we're doing it through food and wellness culture. It's awesome. Awesome. About. I'm glad to be uh, making this connection with you. I'm really thankful to uh, Lee Molson from Disease to Ease for, for connecting us. That's the page that I've connected with. Uh, Lee and I have also teamed up on the Apple Diet. Uh, oh, we're yes. going to be bringing that Apple Diet down to Jamaica. We're bringing that Apple Diet across the UK, Australia, and the US. And uh, so people can be watching for that. And uh, this is going to be, you know, a, a healing community, a, a community of people that are all on the like, like mindset that have come to realize that healing is a normal, natural thing, and it can happen, and, and it's all within the power of the mind, and it's just to get some new information and, and to um, change some habit and behavior, and uh, it takes a little bit of process. We have to go through some process. We have to go through some detoxification and, and it's not comfortable and, and it's not easy, but you know what? The reward at the end is so much more energy and so much more um, clarity and, and so much less pain and so much less fat and so much more awareness and so much more uh, peace and joy and happiness and love within and, and that expresses out in all aspects of our life. So it's well worth whatever sort of challenge we have to go through to get there. Okay. Well, we're looking forward for sure, you know, to, to sharing with everyone. Uh, in the meantime, you can visit my website, sunfired.com, S-U-N-F-I-R-E-D, and uh, keep abreast with what I'm doing right through Facebook and YouTube. And, you know, we are all excited. We're all happy for this connection. And we're happy to share with you when you come to Jamaica, a real apple. Jamaica have the O-T-E-T apple. Yeah. Better known as the water apple. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so, sir, you know, what, I'll, what I'll ask is that uh, you will connect uh, on Messenger, maybe all of your, your website. Um, you know, obviously, we'll connect your page. We'll, we'll connect anything that you would want us to connect there. Anything that you may want me to show shine the light on please uh please send me any links that you would like so that i'll make sure i i upload this video and attach those links to it so that anyone could reach out if they wanted to speak with you or anything and uh, i'll invite everyone to reach out to me if they want to talk about um possibilities and maybe talking about dates for a trip down to jamaica to join us and i'm thinking and we're looking at something maybe february march april you know, I, I don't know, February, March, April, February, March, April, May, you know, something in that time there when we're just tired of the, the cold weather up here in the north and we could <laughs> use some sunlight and some fresh, yes, fresh yes. sun-fired sun foods. And uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break us off there, sir. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.
I'll be in touch with you some more. I'm sure Lee will be in touch with okay. you some more. We will be talking some more, and we'll, we hope we'll be talking with you again uh, online as well, too. Okay, and from my paradise spot in Costa Rica, Pura Vida to everyone. Pura Pure life. Vida, Pura Vida. Thank pura you vida. Much, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yes, yes. Blessings. All right.